What is going on, YouTube? AJ here, doing another Let's Play Final Fantasy XI Online Retail on the Bahamut server. And we are way ahead of where we were when you last saw us. Uh, we are at level 72? 71. And the reason for that is last night we made a video. We made a video last night, hour long, uh, level 52 to, uh, who I don't even know. Uh, Fifty-two to sixty something, sixty-five. Good video. I enjoyed it. Uh, had a <laughs> we had a update, and with our update, uh, once again, I, I kind of I should put a sticky note on my monitor that every time we have an update, we will need to. that we need to uh, reset our mic in OBS because for some reason OBS absolutely adores um, taking our mic off when we have an update. Like it just totally rips like... So the mic will be on. I have a uh, quad, what's it called? Quadcast. So I, have, I use a quadcast. I love this microphone. Uh, I have a quadcast um, X or something. Whatever I think the older one is. One of the reasons I love it is because uh, it has a very easy tap to mute system so you don't have to hear me burp or cough or the dogs barking when I can when I can hit it fast enough like a super easy tap to mute and you know you know that it's muted because the microphone itself what I'm talking into right now is bright red a bright red glow and when you hit mute it's off there's no glow at all so when you look at if you look at the microphone it's either red or no light at all. Um, so I just figured that it was on and recording and working. But no, OBS was like, no, whenever you update, we're going <sighs> to... We're going to remove that microphone from you. And I don't blame them. I blame myself because I should... This is like the third time it's happened. I should actually know better by now. Um, but anyway... Uh, yeah, we had that, and then we did another, we did a video tonight, and it was just very low energy. Hoping that later on, somehow later on in the night, I have more energy. Which I kind of feel like I do. But yeah, that one was kind of like, I was fighting these slow skewas, slow skewa, whatever these are. I just wasn't talking, I was just like, Ugh. low energy, not fun. So, now we're here, and we are fighting. I have a feeling this XP band is going to go really fast. That's okay. This, we can make it kind of a short video, that's fine. Didn't we have something? Okay, so we have our dual wield sword skill. Is sword skill plus five better than strength? And I think it is. 
We're not dual wielding, but I think sword skill plus five is pretty good. Should help us hit more and harder. Oh, that will I'll catch all of those right there. Do we get two or three? Oh, we got three. Look at us. I really like Paladin. We're gonna catch another one? We're gonna catch another one. Great. Alright, let's uh, go ahead and Invincible for now. Majesty, that was a bad choice right there. We don't really need that when we're invincible. We'd like to avoid aggroing any more. So let's move over here. It's a, it, it it is a lot different. I I am in the spot of Valena Raw now. Uh, haven't been this way. I mean, even on uh, Rune Fencer, we had Valenarol tanking for us, so it's a little bit weird to be the one taking these hits. Oh yeah, no, we're already way past that. Uh, XP band, huh? Seven sixty. No, uh, that's surprising. No uh, XP chain, huh? So one of the things that I was talking about in one of the episodes where I I didn't get to <laughs> really record, I was really disappointed. Even though I did go really ham, and I hope I don't go super ham. I think I just get passionate sometimes about very dumb things. Um. Okay, yeah, I think there was a bonus to Unity Accolades like this month. Alright, these things don't, they don't aggro, I know that. But they link their uh their MO is they link from really far away. So what is Majesty? Okay, so Majesty is one of those weird ones that it's a... What, it's a two minute? And it's a one minute cooldown. Okay, so it's kind of like Hasso.
I'm not, I'm not upset with myself for the, uh, the aggro, though. The aggro is pretty good. My hate control. I am a, a little bit, uh, higher level than the, uh, trusts, but... I'm not unpleased by the... So what I got so animated about on the video that didn't record any audio from at least me, and maybe people would like that more if I just played Final Fantasy XI without a uh, commentary track. You're making it worse. <laughs> you talking is making it worse, AJ. Stop it. Alright, Koru is out of mana. So the, uh... Oh no, what is she doing? Hold on. Good, I tricked her into leaving. <sighs> there are times in life when somebody can say something, right? They can say something, and you could completely agree with them. Uh, I don't know. I think that the Joy Toy is better. Uh, do I have anything else, though? I don't think I do. Oh, yeah, I think I have... What? Edcilio boots. That's probably it, though. When somebody can say something that's completely correct, like if they can utter a completely true statement... But the person saying it has legitimately no room to say it. And, you're, and the, you just throw your hands up in the air. Um, for me, this case came when I was reading an article very recently. A, like, last couple of days. Uh, about Seth Rogen. Uh, so I'm reading this article and Seth Rogen is saying he's upset basically because the streaming platforms and they've always done this this is, not, this is nothing new it's really nothing new the streaming platforms uh, Netflix, Hulu, Amazon they they don't give uh, numbers. Like, it's not like a network TV show that has Nielsen ratings that can say, hey, your Nielsen ratings were X, Y, and Z. That means you've got, you know, 12% of the U.S. audience was watching you guys, which is a really big deal. Uh... And these streaming services, I'm sure they know. Obviously, they know how many people click on something, and they know exactly how long they watch whatever show it is. 
No, exactly, but they don't tell people. Um, this was first brought to my attention when I was listening to uh, comedians. Uh, because I think that's like kind of the first thing that uh, Netflix dabbled in was putting on comedy specials. Pay, I mean, like you could pay a comedian, you know, like if they're not a good comedian, if they're like a, if they're a known comedian, but not like a super, like it's not like Dave Chappelle or Louis C.K., you could pay him, you know, like probably two hundred grand, and. They'll record an hour special, and then they'll ask, you know, like, well, how much, how many viewers did it get? Oh, don't worry about that. You did great. That's what they'd say. Oh, don't worry about it. Did great. Uh, and it's it's a good way. It's a good way to like you keep your cards close to your chest. I mean, like, if that comedian got paid two hundred grand for a one-hour comedy special, and it brought in Netflix, like. An estimated, you know, like, what? One million dollars in revenue from views and whatever. Uh, they don't need it. They, I mean, like, it's in, it's in their best interest not to tell the, that person that, oh, well, if you made a million dollars and then you only gave me 200... Uh, why don't you give me 300 more? We'll split the 50-50. And no, they're, they're not in that game. That's not, that's not the game they're in. They're in the game of making money. Uh, hey, meat jerky. And now we embark upon the dark times. 76 through... 99. So, anyway. Seth Rogen was complaining. I guess he did a TV show on some... Streaming service. I don't... I'm not... I'm not a... I'm gonna try to be nice here, but I'm not a... What you would call a Seth Rogen fan. I think that some... Some of what he does is... Kind of funny. Um... A lot of stuff I've not seen, you know, like just because it's not my, it's not my, 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 my jam. <laughs> uh, because like complaining, like, well, why don't they tell us, you know, like, why don't these, why don't these CEOs tell us what these uh, shows are making, you know, because I'd like to know. And the reason you want to know is so you could ask for more, more money. I mean, that's, it's obvious and that's fine. But... Also, it's it, here. Here's what I'm saying. It's like it would be like like it feels like when I, when I hear Seth Rogen complain about how much somebody else makes, it feels like you know like Jeffrey Dahmer is complaining about how many people Ted Bundy killed. It's like, but no, you both, you both killed lots of people. No, but he killed, he killed a lot more, okay? So he's, he's much worse than me. Um, shut the fuck up, you know, like fucking Seth Rogen. You, you, you are a, you're not a good actor. You're just not a good actor. You play the same role. You play the, hey, I'm stoned and I'm the every man and I'm trying to be, you know, lovable and... Hey, look at me. I'm just a fat stoner guy, and I laugh like an idiot. And you've made... I, I looked this up la the, uh, last night. I looked it up. He's, he's got a net worth, and, and I never really trust these things on Google, but Google tells me he's got a net worth of $80 million. $80 million. Give me one reason. Give me one movie. Give me a movie performance. If you are a Seth Rogen fan, give me a movie performance where you're like, this man deserves $80 million. Um, because I, 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 just, I just see, you know, dick, butt, and fart, and pod jokes. And they're not even funny. Like, none of them are like, 
None of them are like groundbreakingly funny. At least his other idiot friend, uh, Jonah, at least he's branched off into like, wow, he's made some kind of, you know, like I think he's a douche, but at least he's branched off and done some drama and like done well in it, I think. Some of the things I've seen. I'm not a fan of his either, but like he's done some dramatic roles that I'm like, okay, that's not bad. You know, <laughs> like he's kind of an actor. The other one, Seth Seth Rogen's like, oh, I'm just going to make, I, I smoke lots of pot, guys, and I'm going to make fart jokes. Like it, I guess, I guess here comes my age again. If I want to, if I want to watch a stoner kind of comedy, um, Cheech and Chong did it a lot better than you, uh, long ago, <laughs> you know, like, and I don't think either of them have $80 million. Uh, so maybe you should give them some of your, your money, <laughs> but yeah, it goes to, it goes to the point where. Yes, Seth Rogen, these CEOs of these companies make far too much money. Far, far, far too much money. They, they, should, they should make a fraction of what they make. Um, but so should you. <laughs> so don't, you didn't need to be the one to say it. I think, I think if you just walked away and, and never uh, talked to to anyone in the rest of your life and just enjoy your 80 million dollars everybody would be better off or you could you or you could do your laugh you could go to your do a movie and do your laugh and talk about pot oh boy i don't even really dislike him that much i just it's i i really can't stand when I really can't stand when people who make more money who make more money than like an American like a full like a five person American family if you added up like the average middle class person in the US their their family let's say five people in their family mom dad three kids and you take their whole life working salaries add it all together and they probably ain't coming anywhere close to 80 million dollars right but now you're telling me how much money other people should make right <laughs> thank you seth rogan the voice of reason and and your con contribution to society is what zach and miri make a porno thank you so much for your contribution to society was that was that even the movie? I don't even know. I didn't watch it. I, I saw the commercial and that was that was good enough. Which is sad because I really enjoy I really enjoy early um what's his name? Kevin Smith. Early Kevin Smith made you feel good about it made you kind of feel good about like life. You're like, oh my god, this guy had a passion for something. And he did it. And he did it on a budget. And now he's... And then, like... He did, like, three or four pretty darn good movies. But then he just went off the deep end and just... He opened his movie film canister and put it under the toilet and just dumped everything out on it. Some of his movies are really, really bad. Really, really bad. But those, like, first three are, like, you're like, wow. Good for you. You made it. You did it. You made it, and you did it. And I really don't like... I I don't know. Maybe I do dislike Seth Rogen more than I... <laughs> more than I admit. Because he also had that stupid thing... And I remember I looked it up. Well, so this was a very interactive episode, that the one that I deleted where the mic wasn't working. Um, we also, I looked up online also the um, Seth Rogen ceramics class weed joint roller table that he was selling for a minute. Like, and this is just a ceramic, like it's a basic ceramic thing that you could go to your 
local community college that has a kiln and you could make this yourself. And then the, the, the adult instructor there would be like, well, you did a very good job here. Thank you. Hope you enjoyed yourself. Recommend me to your friends. Um, that level of ceramics. Uh, and he was selling it for like $500. And he's like, this is a great deal. This is a great deal for all your pot smokers out there. And it's, you just like, I think that you, you kind of like at some point people, these people that have so much money just don't even realize anymore. They just don't realize how, wait, are you telling me that not everybody has $500 just to throw down on a weed table? I think everybody should own a weed table. <laughs> you have to make it $20. That's what it costs to make, if that. Oh, man. It's so out of touch. I uh, I think it's the older I get, the more I do really hate celebrities. I really do. They're, they must be stopped. <laughs> they must be stopped. I. The one thing that... Uh, talking about celebrities... Uh, and I know that she did go to jail. <laughs> she did go to jail. So she probably had a lot of money taken away from her. But I see these Martha Stewart commercials. There's Martha Stewart for, like, Amazon where she threatens a... a one of those talking things that records all your converse, conversations. Uh, uh, dots? No, Amazon... Amazon Dot? No. Uh, uh, um, Alexa. She's like, she threatens an Alexa with a pan or something. So she's got that commercial. And it's like, okay. And she's advertising her line of uh, bakeware or something that she has no zero uh, feedback in making. They just, it was a Chinese company that... Uh, was willing to pay a couple of dollars to have uh, a celebrity put their name on it, and she was like, yes, give me money. This is the Martha Stewart line. Um, and then she's in another commercial, and, like, I think she's in two other commercials. And it's like, okay, the, she's... She's an old... She's an older woman. At some point... Don't just stop. Maybe just just stop. Like just stop. We don't we need we don't need to see it. I think it must be a it must be a fame thing, and I don't I really don't understand fame. Fame sounds terrible. Like, the idea that, like, you you would go someplace and people would swarm around you. Oh, can I have your autograph? Can I take a picture? That seems like the worst thing. That sounds like my nightmare. Um, when I want to be rich and famous. No, leave the famous out of it. I want to be rich and anonymous. <laughs> I want to be able to go to the uh, dive bar... That's right next to the uh, grocery store. I hate grocery shopping. So I want to go to that dive bar and have like, you know, a beer and a shot. That way, that way, uh, grocery shopping isn't that bad. And can you imagine if you're if you're if you're someone as wonderful as Seth Rogen going to get a beer and a shot? When you get before you get your oh no he doesn't get his own grocery somebody does that for him I'm sure um uh, so I I live in the Midwest as I've said before and um, I am not too far from a college town. And this college town is a, it's not a, it's not a uh, Alabama or a Georgia or a, you know, Michigan type of college town, but it's a, it's a college town that puts out a lot of pro talent in just about every sport. 
And there was a very high draft pick. Um, a very high draft pick. Um, so high that, like, just his rookie contract, he could live for the rest of his life if he wanted to. Uh, and we were at a bar playing pool. Again, I was in the pool league years ago. And we're in this bar playing pool, and this kid walks in. I call him a kid. He walks in. And he's a professional. He was a professional athlete, you know, like. He kind of, his build is a little bit different than everybody else's. <laughs> you know, like, Pete playing uh, nine ball over there looks a little bit different than somebody that was taken in the first five picks of a uh, professional league draft. Sorry, Pete, but he does. Um... And I think that, like, luckily for me, the vibe was just treat them like everybody else. Like, that was my thought. Uh, I'm not much older than, like, this is, he was drafted years and years and years ago. Like, probably 20 years ago around that time. Um, but the, the this incident was about five years ago. Um... And in my mind, I was like, just if he sits next to you, say, hey, you know, how's it going, buddy? You don't treat him like that. And then you kind of think to yourself, does is that what he wanted? Did Or did he want to go to that bar so that everybody could be like, oh, my God, you were awesome in college. And I can't believe you were drafted that high and you're my favorite. Like, is that what he wanted? Or were we cool by just treating him like everybody else? What was weird is, it, like, this bar that, it was a complete dive bar that I'm playing pool at. It wasn't uh, my bar. It was, like, a, a bar, like, you would travel to. And, um, it was, like, a, it's a, it's a Miller Lite and Jack Daniels bar. Like, that's what you, like, Jack and Coke, give me a Miller Lite, give me a Budweiser. That kind of bar. Nobody's there asking for, I'll have a dirty martini. Uh, I'm sure there's people that drink dirty martini, but it wasn't, not everybody was fancy. <laughs> you know, like, it was, again, it was a beer beer and shot bar. And he came in there, and this guy, he, he yeah, he ordered a glass of wine. And they even, like, he when he ordered it, I didn't make fun of him. I just looked at the bartender and said, like, you guys serve wine here? <laughs> oh, yeah. He, he, he drank his wine. He, you know, I think maybe one or two people asked to take pic like selfies with him, and he did. Very, very cool. Uh, very cool guy. You know, like, he was very cool. But I think uh, the reason he was cool is that we weren't swarming him. Yeah, he, I'm sure his rookie contract that he signed, he never had to work again. If he was smart. Who knows? What are we at? 77? Alright. I think we're going to call it there. I don't even know how long this episode's been. We've been so angry at Seth Rogen that we don't even know. But, uh, eh, could be a short episode. Uh, it's a little bit late and it is Sunday night, so I am going to go to bed. Uh, so, hope you enjoyed it, uh, as we complain about celebrities and money. <laughs> Until next time, thanks for watching. Take her easy, folks. Bye.